Anthony on Air Podcast, special episode, breaking news. Jeffrey Epstein associate Jean-Luc Burnell found dead in his cell in a prison in Paris during a nighttime check from an apparent suicide. This is uh, breaking right now. Moments ago, we were notified. We have all the news for you right here, including how Jean-Luc Burnell was taken down the involvement of Virginia Roberts to free. And we have early reaction from Jean-Luc Brunel's attorney, which is going to give us a little bit of an indication on where this is probably going to go over the course of the next couple of days. So it's important that you're subscribed to our channel, whether you're watching on YouTube, Facebook, or you're watching on Spotify, one of the few podcasts that are available via video on Spotify, uh, or you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, make sure you're subscribed Share this episode because we're going to have all the information for you, not only today, but as this uh, continues to evolve over the course of the next couple of days, just like we did when Epstein uh, was found from an apparent suicide, uh, Ghislaine Maxwell's trial and all the rest. You can check out all our videos and episodes on that. We'll put links in the description all around wherever you're watching and or listening from. So uh, moments ago, I was notified John Luke Burnell, who was uh, being held in La Sante prison. This is in the southern part of Paris, was discovered at 1 a.m. during a nighttime check in. You know, guards, they'll walk around. They'll uh, check in on the prisoners, see how everything is going. They discovered John Luke Burnell, 74, um, was apparently hanging in his cell in what they believe to be a suicide. We've seen this movie before, have we not? I mean, uh, this is exactly the way Epstein went down as well. I'm not sure why Jean-Luc Brunel was not on Suicide Watch. We know from our extensive time following the Ghislaine Maxwell trial, she was and is and continues to be on Suicide Watch. Lots of check-ins. She complained about that a whole bunch. In fact, uh, here's a photograph that was released during the trial of Ghislaine Maxwell by the Southern District Court of New York. Uh, famous photograph now where uh, Ghislaine is uh, giving Jeffrey Epstein a foot massage. She's uh, showing off her cleavage. Uh, and you can see the third person in this photograph, if you're not familiar, is indeed Jean-Luc Brunel, who we now know has died at the age of 74. Um, he was suspected of being a member of Jeffrey Epstein's global uh, sex ring. Uh, this, no doubt, will fuel tons of conspiracy theories. As you can tell by my tone here, we're already not really buying this. I mean, this comes one week after Prince Andrew settled his case with Virginia Roberts. This is during the retrial attempt by Ghislaine Maxwell after she was found guilty for her crimes and what she did with Jeffrey Epstein. It's amazing to me that we're here. I can't believe this when I got word that this was going down, but this is where we are. Uh, so let's get into uh, the information. Um, two Paris papers reporting this news. They're the ones who broke it. Obviously, this happened uh, early 1 a.m. in the morning. So Paris newspapers are going to be the ones to break something like this. Prosecutors in Paris have confirmed uh, that he was found hanging in his cell. Um, it is not known whether or not Jean-Luc Brunel was sharing a cell or not. Here's the other thing. The Daily Mail had an article on this just moments ago. They have since um, retracted a tweet that they put out that video cameras were not running in the cell. Um, as of right now, we do not know. Uh, nobody's been able to confirm uh, whether or not there has been uh, footage inside. Um, we don't know whether or not Brunel was sharing a cell with another inmate or not. This is, again, we just found this out moments ago. This is legit, literally breaking news. Uh, so there's a lot more information to come. Uh, like I said, if anything does happen, we'll have it for you here on the podcast you can follow us on Twitter. If there's like a little tidbit that comes out, we'll be sure to uh, put it out there on Facebook, Twitter, etc. But we do know that the night patrol found his uh, lifeless body around 1 a.m. A judicial inquiry has already been launched. Uh, early evidence is pointing to a suicide. This is according to authorities uh, over there in the prison in France. 
little bit of background on Jean-Luc Brunel. Virginia Giuffre, uh was responsible for taking him down. Uh, it was December in 2020 that he was indicted after two days of interviews uh, by the examining magistrate and specialist police from an anti-pedophilia unit. Uh, he was arrested in the city of at the uh, Charles de Gaulle airport while he was trying to board a plane to Senegal. He told detectives at the time that he was going on a holiday. Um, Brunel was suspected of being a part of the global underage ring that was organized by Jeffrey Epstein. Uh, others involved in the ring include Ghislaine Maxwell, obviously, uh, as we said. A French judicial inquiry into Brunel's conduct was opened in August of 2019 when prosecutors heard allegations that Brunel and, the, and uh, Prince Andrew had shared a common person. That was Virginia Roberts. Um, she's told lawyers that she was, obviously, we know her history and what she says about Epstein and being involved with the ring. We know what she's said about being involved with Prince Andrew. Um, most of the accusations that have bubbled up on Jean-Luc Brunel happened in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. This guy has a long history of accusations against him. But they fell outside of the 20-year limit of prosecuting sex crimes in France. When this got re-brought up and... Virginia Giuffre was involved. We are now talking about some crimes that happened in the uh, late 90s, early 2000s, 2001, which falls within the 20 year limit. When Virginia Roberts started talking and talked to authorities over in France, that news got out and more people started coming forward, uh, including more victims that had more recent run ins with Jean Luc Brunel. So that was the tide that kind of uh, got uh, police involved and were able to bring down Jean-Luc Brunel, able to arrest him in uh, December of 2020. Uh, they had originally planned to go later, but then when they learned that he was going to be, uh, you know, leaving the airport in Paris to go to Senegal, uh, they jumped on it right then and there, and uh, they were able to arrest him. So he was awaiting trial. Uh, for what he had done. Apparently, supposedly, the attacks um, happened down at uh, Epstein's Island, at least the ones that involve Virginia Giuffre. Uh, according to French law, a French citizen can be tried in France for offenses that were committed abroad. Uh, both Prince Andrew and Brunel have, of course, denied all these allegations and claims. Um the prince is considered a key witness in uh, both of these cases. And uh, we obviously know that he settled with Virginia Giuffre. That's why when we covered that settlement, which just happened Tuesday, that was the breaking news on Tuesday. And again, we have, you know, we'll put the episode all around or in the description here. Um, we were kind of shocked because we felt like there was more work to be done here. Uh, if Virginia Roberts didn't settle, you know, and had to have um, Prince Andrew on, on, on the stand testify or be deposed at least, um, who knows what else would have come out? Who knows what other names would have been, uh, you know, put more prominent in the news? Because of course, you know, obviously Jean, you know, this Jean-Luc Brunel, you got Les Wexner, obviously all the names that we've been through. Um, but when you have, Prince Andrew on a stand in Manhattan giving testimony and he's saying or is forced to say these names being asked about these names. It's a bigger deal. I know people don't really put a lot of credence into that, but it is. It's a bigger deal. We see all the articles. <clears throat> we see all the podcasts. Everybody's talking about this stuff. But when you have that, that becomes the headline. That becomes the big thing. Public pressure mounts. Uh, government's law enforcement forced to act. Um, so that's why it was surprising that Virginia Roberts, uh, Jeffrey settled, but she did. My thoughts on that, of course, on uh, that special uh, podcast episode. So go back and check that out. If you want to hear, I don't want to rehash that, but credit to Virginia uh, because she was the one who started the, uh, you know, the snowball into an avalanche to finally get Brunel arrested. So at least he could be held accountable for what he had done for decades, it seems like decades, um, wouldn't have happened without her. So full credit, full marks go to her. 
Uh, we showed you this photograph if you're watching this episode. Uh, we showed you this photograph that was released by the Southern District Court of New York. This is one of like a billion photographs of these three. Um, Jean-Luc Brunel has been photographed on Epstein's Island. Uh, they've been photographed on planes together, various locations. Always very f friendly, always very flirty. There's a photograph of him like biting Ghislaine's head. They're always laughing. They're always smiling. Uh, the appearance over the course of, you know, the time that Epstein started to be investigated was that Jean-Luc Brunel was very, very high up, very, very close to them. Um, he was playing that model scout role uh, where he had, uh, you know, this modeling company and he would um, always be photographed with models who worked for his agency. Uh, there was plenty of communications, as we learned, not only in the Glenn Maxwell trial, but as Epstein was investigated, uh, that there would constantly be uh, phone calls from Jean-Luc Brunel to Epstein, uh, messages taken down about girls. Um, Brunel would discuss uh, girls that he had just met or had experiences with. It was always done in, you know, under a code of, you know, this one could give you Russian lessons, you know, for Russian girls. Um, you know, there was always like a little innuendo, a little code being uh, shared between the two, but they did find uh, handwritten messages from Jean-Luc Brunel uh, for when he had called. Uh, that was all discovered during the investigation into Epstein. Um, so there's no doubt that there's been a long-standing relationship, friendship, um, uh, you know, working understanding between uh, the three that you see on the screen here before you. Um, but again, credit to Virginia Jufree for um, starting this whole entire trend. Again, this is early on. There's going to be a lot more to this. Um, I want to share with you the early reaction from Jean-Luc Brunel, but two things that I want to mention first Make sure you subscribe to our channel, uh, YouTube, Facebook. Like I said, you know, we've been keeping track of Jean-Luc Brunel, ancillary kind of discussions. Most of our focus lately has been obviously on the Virginia Jeffrey, uh, on the uh, Ghislaine Maxwell case. Um, we're waiting on the retrial there. So we'll have that kind of news uh, coming up for you. But we've been really diving in in the last two, three weeks on Virginia and Prince Andrew and their settlement on Tuesday was a pretty, that was a pretty shocking discovery. But as you can see, this whole little ring of scumbags, the stories just continue. So share this episode, make sure you're helping us promote it, get it out there. Because without you guys pushing it around social, uh, these things would just be swept under the rug. The powers that be that want to keep all this stuff quiet um, would just be you know, would be winning if it wasn't for people like you that are constantly sharing and promoting uh, content like this. Uh, let's talk about the conspiracy. Let's talk about Jean-Luc Brunel's attorney. But the other part of this is uh, supporting our sponsors that support us. Lucky for us, we have a phenomenal sponsor, Jumpstart Coffee Company. I am drinking a cup of it right now, early morning here um, to get this podcast started. What's great about Jumpstart Coffee Company is not only are they great coffee, but they support a great cause. That's the Navy SEAL Foundation. Here in America, um, we enjoy wonderful freedoms, and it's all because of our great armed forces. And Jumpstart Coffee Company has uh, committed to supporting the Navy SEALs and the Navy SEAL Foundation. These are for SEALs that are coming out of uh, their service, and as they get into uh, you know, post-Navy SEAL life, uh, the Navy SEAL Foundation is there to help them and anything that they need. And Jumpstart Coffee Company gives 50, 50, 50 percent of their profits to the Navy SEAL Foundation. It's truly extraordinary. That's why we love having them as a sponsor, because when you purchase a Jumpstart Coffee Company, not only are you helping the podcast survive and continue to make episodes, uh, but you're helping a great coffee company and you're helping the Navy SEALs all in one little purchase. It's unbelievable. Grab as many bags as you can. I love all their flavors uh, from the dark roast to the medium roast. They also have decaf, half calf as well. They have a light roast. Um, their flavors are just extraordinary. Uh, I absolutely love it. It's the only coffee that I drink anymore. And of course you can save 15% 
when you use the promo code AOA15 when you order with the link in the description for this episode. That's right. Click the link in the description of this episode and put in the promo code AOA15 and you'll save 15% off of your order. Uh, you can also click on the banner for Jumpstart Coffee Company at the homepage of anthonyonair.com. Um, you have to admit it is quite odd and very bizarre to have one high-profile billionaire accused of running an international pedophilia ring turn up dead in his cell now you have, by all intents and purposes, one of his nearest and dearest friends and close associates, scumbag, in that same ring, turn up dead from an apparent suicide just a few years later, while the madam of the crew is in prison undergoing trial, which she was just convicted and now is attempting a retrial because of a witness um, a witness questionnaire that may have been filled out incorrectly. It's bizarre. Coming off a week where the prince, Prince Andrew, in the royal family, Great Britain, settled a case against the person that also helped bring this guy down. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. It's crazy. I can't believe that we're here. I can't believe that we're seeing this story again. I was just like looking on Twitter just like a couple of seconds ago and people are already with the memes of this guy was found dead and they got um, uh, Ron Burgundy, Anchorman, in that scene where he's like, I don't believe you. You know what I mean? Like, it's insane. We've seen this movie before. I can't believe it. Let's dive in. Um, if these are legitimate, apparent suicides, if Jean-Luc Brunel was suicided the way that Epstein was, who's pulling the strings here? Who's doing it? I, I, like, who? Royal family? Blintons? The Blintons? I know there's a big body count there. Uh, can't say the actual name. I don't want to be put on a list. I don't know. I, I, I honestly don't know. Uh, you know, Les Wexner's still running around. Um, obviously, there's plenty of other people in these organizations that you'd love to to speak to. We heard from Juan Alessi during, uh, he testified during the case of um, Ghislaine Maxwell uh, recently. We've never heard from Sarah Kellen, who claims to be a victim as well, who's also been accused uh, and claims to be a victim, sort of in that bizarre gray area in these cases where it's like... Uh, victim or you know one of the people who procured victims um we don't know but we know she's out there and hasn't been you know forced to testify or answer any sort of major questions in a public forum like a court like a trial um but when you think about it who who's you know everybody says epstein was Mossad and part of this international uh, information ring as well okay you know I, I, i'm not disputing that but when you look at it now, like let's let's evaluate where we are. It's Saturday, February nineteenth. It's the morning. We just got this news. Who's pulling the strings here? Who's trying to keep all these people quiet? Is this just a crazy coincidence? Are we to believe that these people really ended their own lives? It's not out of the realm of possibility. Certainly, in the case of Epstein, it is very suspect. The cameras were off. The guards fell asleep. Right? Like all like. The, the 17 things that had to go wrong in order for this to go down the way it went down actually went wrong. It's crazy to think that. I'm not buying that it was a suicide. I don't think most people are. When you hear what this is, you kind of feel the same way. And I think the reaction from John Luke Brunel's attorney is pretty interesting because he hasn't, they haven't spoken a lot. Again, this just happened. So reaction people discussing it that is all to come in the next few hours and in the next few days um but early on credit french newspapers le monde the le parisian the le parisian if you want to say um they got a quote from jean-luc brunel's attorney and it's the only reaction that we have right now at this hour and the quote is 
from his attorney that um, this didn't come. This is the quote. His decision was not driven by guilt, but by a deep sense of injustice. His decision was not driven by guilt, but by a deep sense of injustice. Now, I know lawyers are always in a tough place. A lot of them have to do with scumbaggy things a lot for really scumbaggy people. And, I mean, I don't think it's, I think it's scumbaggy. But if we're going to give these lawyers the benefit of the doubt here, they're doing it to earn a living, right? I think it's kind of interesting that at the moment where you no longer have to do that because your client is dead, you're sticking to that. You know what I mean? Like, he's basically sticking to the fact that his client was innocent. Now, when his client's alive and he's got to defend him, it's a lawyer's responsibility to defend their client. If their client says they're they're not guilty, they have a responsibility there to, to defend their client to the best of their abilities. I wonder how many of these lawyers really believe that. I know that's their oath. That's their deal. Somebody comes to you and says, I'm innocent. It's their job no matter how shitty they might think that their client is, to defend them. Okay, fine. But when your client's gone, it's kind of the moment where you can be like, yeah, I don't know. And I'm not saying he has to say in the papers moments after this guy's found dead, yeah, you know, I always had a suspicion he was kind of a scumbag. He doesn't have to say that, but he doesn't have to say this. He doesn't have to defend him. There's a difference between, I have no comment right now, or we're just trying to get through this right now. And saying his decision was not driven by guilt, but by a deep sense of injustice. I mean, I got to remind everybody, this isn't a guy who had his name in the papers a couple times with Epstein, you know, had some strains like, oh, I don't know, like, you know, well, maybe, maybe not. You know, this isn't a guy, people who have looked into this whole ring and said, well, they, you know, could go either way. Well, these women could be making it up or he could be guilty. This is not that guy. This is a guy who has decades, decades of accusations against him. Virginia Jeffries suspects that there were thousands, thousands of girls trafficked to this guy. Thousands. Think about that. You know, remember back to, we're all jaded now, but remember back to when you first heard the name Jeffrey Epstein and you didn't know anything about him because that was, that was everybody, basically. Nobody knew anything about Epstein. Think about that time. And then you started to read and you started to see a podcast or you started whatever and you started to hear about some of the stuff and you were like, holy shit, how was this able to happen for so long? This is the same thing. This is the same thing. And the only difference between this guy and Epstein is, from what we could tell, he wasn't in charge. Um, that's it. But he still was pretty heavily involved. And when you're running a modeling agency and you're working with, you know, constantly working with 15, 16, 17-year-old girls, I mean, this guy was a major cog in this wheel of scumbags major absolutely major cock um but again like remember that moment when you first heard about epstein you're like eh. when you start to see all these things and you go that is an awful lot of stuff to then maintain your innocence you know uh it's weird you know you hear somebody somebody's accused of something and then there's like a second or a third and you're like oh okay eh, not great but when it's thousands over the course of decades. Come on. Come on. Are we really to believe that these people were all innocent? You know what I'm saying? So for the lawyer to come out and say, well, you know, he felt this deep sense of injustice. Come on. You know, it, it's he's dead. You, your job's done. You don't have to stand out there this day and go, eh, well, you know, this was really unfair treatment of it, you know. This is unfair treatment. Was it? Was it? I'm sorry, I got a bullshit meter. And uh, although I love to give people the benefit of the doubt, this one's pinging to the red. You know what I'm saying? 
Bullshit meter here is pinging to the red. You gotta be kidding me. But again, I ask, who's behind this? You're like me. You're sitting there. Maybe you've seen our podcast before. Maybe you've listened. Maybe you've seen or listened to other podcasts, watched documentaries, read the headlines. You tell me. Who's pulling strings here? It's either got to be somebody trying to protect themselves or it's, I don't know what it is. is are we to believe this is a, a vast network of governments trying to keep this quiet? Assad trying to keep this quiet? CIA? You know, am I, I don't know. Who? Who? Somebody's got to get to the bottom of this. Somebody's got to investigate it. It's not going to be me. I'd like to live. I don't want to keep living. I'll tell you what what they find. But somebody's got to be there on the ground doing the hard work. That's why, you know, when I expressed some disappointment um, in the settlement of uh, Prince Andrew and Jeffrey, before you get mad at me for, like, slamming Jeffrey, watch the whole episode, watch the whole thing. But I did express some disappointment. I understand her settling, throwing in the towel. Again, without her these people really wouldn't have been taken down, all of them. She was key and instrumental in all of it. But I'm disappointed because, you know, taking that all the way, going 12 rounds with him, in, you know, getting him into a court would have been a big deal. It would have been a big deal. And now we sit in a world where, you know, when Ghislaine was arrested and she was going up for trial, this guy gets arrested, uh, that guy in Canada, the guy with the freaky hair, he's another one. He was, you know... You start to see all these people kind of come down. And you start to think, oh, the little guy's winning. Uh, we're starting to make some progress. We're probably going to stop this kind of behavior. And here we sit today where Ghislaine looks like she's almost definitely going for a retrial. So she's got a second chance at breaking at life, at, at busting out of prison. Uh, Prince Andrew doesn't have to talk to anybody anymore because that case is settled. Uh, Jean-Luc Brunel arguably number three, four on the list of shitheads in this whole crew. He's not talking to anybody now. I mean, we're back to square one of, of these victims. These people can be silenced. You know, you think you're making a little progress here, and now you look, here we are, February 19th, 2022, and outside of Ghislaine in prison, who clearly is not talking, there's not really hope for uncovering whatever mass conspiracy this is because there has to be something. There has to be someone. This isn't just a bunch of coincidences. If you want to go down the conspiracy theory route, somebody or something has to be pulling the strings. And so far, nobody I know has been able to point to anything. You could say the royal family, okay. You could say America's royal family, whose body count continues to rise, okay. I, I'm not going to argue with that. There's, those are two leading uh, suspects, but nobody's anywhere near putting those two entities uh, to an end. Prince Andrew settled. He's done. That's out. You've lost your chance to get that guy behind bars, even though that was a civil case. I'm just, you know, I, I you know, I'm well aware. Um, Twenty-seven times for Big Bill on the old airplane there and the visits. He's nowhere near. Being uh, being put to answer any questions. Nowhere near. When's the last time you heard about him being accused or anybody getting ready to go to court with him? Um, I've said this. I even said it on our last episode. Hillary Clinton went to the New York Democratic Convention uh, just Thursday night to give a speech. Uh, how are people still viewing the Clintons as a political powerhouse with all of this, all of these uh, bits of evidence, the flight logs, all that stuff? They're still leaning on her. She was teasing running for president in 2024. It's unbelievable to me. Out in broad daylight with all of this information. So if it's those two things, where's the progress? Where are you going to, to hold them accountable? Seems non-existent. Seems pretty much non-existent. All right, uh, obviously this is a developing situation and we're going to have more information for you as we go. So make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're sharing our episodes. Subscribe on YouTube. You can follow us on Facebook. Um, and as I said, we're one of the few podcasts that are available besides Joe Rogan 
on video on Spotify. So if you love Spotify uh, and you like watching Joe Rogan, you like watching podcasts, um, you can, uh, of course, subscribe to us there where you can listen or watch. That's the beautiful part about us being on Spotify. Very honored to be invited as one of the first early podcasts to join Joe Rogan in video form on Spotify. There's still not a lot of podcasts that uh, have video that are available to do that. We are. We're grateful. Uh, so please watch there if you can. Uh, links on where we're available is all on anthonyonair.com. That's uh, anthonyonair.com. And if you're finding us for the first time because of this breaking news, um, we follow these things. We talk about them. Uh, but our podcast is Daily News. Frankie C is my co-host. Jay Sabs my other co-host. Uh, we not only talk about some serious things like this, but we do a lot of joking around, a lot of fun, a lot of lighter stuff. So if you need some of that, which you do after these kinds of stories, um, make sure you subscribe, tell your friends. Um, any bit of growth for us is a big help. We're in a big growth phase, so your continued support and sharing on social goes a long, long way. So we can't thank you enough for that. Thanks to Jumpstart Coffee Company for being tremendous partners. Again, don't forget to uh, order with the link in the description there. They have uh, tons of wonderful flavors. Uh, you could even subscribe and save where you can uh, order up two bags, three, four bags a month, however you many bags of coffee you go through in a month, and they'll send it to you every single month. Subscribe and save is a great feature. Again, click on the link in the description below. Put in AOA15 when you uh, check out, and you'll save 15%. More on this and everything else that we're following in the world coming up on the next episode. If anything else breaks, we'll be right here for you. Catch you on the next one. Thanks, everybody.